First chart for today, guys, is this four hour chart. As you can see, the drill line I drew a couple of days ago or even a week ago, I told you I think we will go up retest that green red line there in the middle and then uh, take off again yes we are taking off a little bit early but we are following that line and it can take another couple of days to go and break that 70k level again guys because bitcoin always tends to take a rest before breaking that old high again guys so we can go sideways a little bit and then from that sideways movement go up and break in 70k that is what i am expecting i don't expect us to go again below the 60k level so i expect us to now go sideways a little bit and then move slowly upwards so that 70k break it and go above it for a very long time to come and if we look at this chart, we can see that we left that green line, we crossed that blue line, the purple line, we are now hunting for the yellow line. And then it will take another year before we go into that red line, in my honest opinion. Because these lines are moving up now. And after the halving, they will drastically move up. Just look back to the 2016 moment and the halving, the lines went up massively. After the 2020 moment, the lines went up. And now again, after the halving in April, the lines will go up as well. So that will mean that the red line will be way above that 100k level. Even the yellow line will be near that 100k level. So that Bitcoin black line will cross that yellow line in the future and maybe even reach that red line. And that will be then around 150k in my honest opinion. On this chart, we can see the Bitcoin cycles and we can compare them with each other. We have cycle one, cycle two, cycle three, and now cycle four. Cycle four, you cannot see really good, but that's a normal candle colors, red and green. So the first cycle is that red line, the second is the yellow line, and the third is that blue line. Now the green line at the moment is in between the first and the second cycle. We can see it wicking above that yellow cycle. So that's exactly in between the first and the second cycle. Normally, we should come below that third cycle into that yellow box that we can see on the right side. And that one should normally be between 66 and like 100K. Because if you look at the diminishing returns of cycle one to two to three, it will be logical that cycle four also would have a diminishing return and end a little bit lower than that third cycle. But for now, that fourth cycle is very impressive and outperforming even the second cycle. Just zoom in, you can see that we are above that yellow line now with the candlesticks. We are outperforming the second cycle. So we could even end somewhere between cycle two and three, because of course I can't believe that we will be outperforming the second cycle for all the bull market. I think that the maximum that we can achieve is end somewhere be cycle, between cycle two and three, or very close to the result of cycle three. And the result of cycle three would lead to between 150k and 250k. Very interesting chart that is comparing the Bitcoin cycles from the bottom to where we are now, and it compares it to that first, second and third cycle. Pause this video to analyze the chart a little bit more so you really understand what I'm telling you here. If we continue like this, continue outperforming the yellow cycle, we would end between the red and the yellow cycle. In the worst case scenario, then between the second and the third cycle. And in the worst, worst, worst case scenario, we would end in the yellow box just down below the third cycle, around 100K. But if you look at the charts at the moment, that doesn't look like an option anymore. On this chart, we can see where we are at the moment with Bitcoin. And you have always an early market, then you have the chasm and then you have the mainstream market. We just left that chasm part. We are now in the early majority because of the adoption worldwide, not only among retail, but also among institutional investors and among countries. We now know that Bitcoin is the beginning of the early majority. So I bought Bitcoin already in the innovator space. I went through the early adopter space and now our Bitcoins are finally entering the early majority phase. This is the phase where the biggest amount of people will join Bitcoin. This is the phase where everyone steps into the new revolutionary technology that's going to be the gold of the 21st century. And from the moment we cross the top of this hill, we will reach the conservative people that then will be convinced, wow, now it exists almost 20 years. Yeah, now we can maybe also go into Bitcoin. Now it's very safe. And almost at the end, we have the laggards, the skeptics that will be going into Bitcoin forced because it probably will become a world reserve currency in the next 20 years. So this is how the mainstream market moves 
from innovators to early adopters to early majority to late majority to laggards. If you step in, in this early majority time, you are still ahead of the curve. Do realize that. You are not too late to buy Bitcoin. The bull market has started, but we will, in my honest opinion, still double in price and the next couple of bull markets till the year 2034 will be the gold rush of Bitcoin. All of the world will be able to accumulate Bitcoin through their banks, through spot ETFs, through crypto exchanges. All the possibilities will be there to buy Bitcoin and give all the people in the world access to Bitcoin and the demand will grow tremendously while the supply stays the same and even becomes less and less and less when it comes to creation of new Bitcoins daily. Just understand that you're not too late. You are still part of the early majority and that means you're still on time to make a shitload of profits if you start to accumulate Bitcoin today. And this chart shows you exactly what I was saying because this is the chart that shows you how many billions US of dollars are being bought now by the spot ETFs. Even they just started. They also belong to the early majority. At the moment, the volume is over 10 billion US dollars daily. This volume is increasing by the day. They are the early majority as well. So if they are the early majority, you can be that as well. You should be accumulating shit of the Bitcoin as you see that all the world is accumulating Bitcoin. Now, if you just calculate the spot ETFs, it's nine companies offering Bitcoins to their clients. $10 billion worth of volume daily. This is insane volume. You should become part of this. Here you can see the uh, specific numbers of all the spot ETF offers, IBIT or FBTC, or you can all see them above ARCB. We can see that IBIT is leading with 788 million US dollars over there. That's insane. We have FBTC 125 million dollars. Outflows uh, a little bit uh, at two of them, BTCO and Grayscale, of course. We can see small outflows, but if you look at the total net, it was still an inflow of $648 million worth of Bitcoin bought. Just think of that. $600 million worth of Bitcoin is being bought at a price of $60,000 US dollar. Meaning there is a demand of 10,000 Bitcoins daily, while only 900 Bitcoins are being created. And from April, only 400 Bitcoins are going to be created. The supply and demand is taking a huge distance from each other, which will lead into a supply shock. There is a massive amount of demand, but there is no supply, which will lead into a supply shock, will lead into insane prices for Bitcoin. I hope you really enjoyed the charts, guys, but short term, I still see some volatility upcoming because there's still a shitload of open interest. And yes, I still believe that it could surpass the 70K with a full body candle close, guys. Yes, like I drew, you know, coming up, back retesting the support and then bam going up again that's what i see in the short term long term of course definitely going into a full blowing bull market the next like 12 months bringing bitcoin to prices way way above 100k in my honest opinion and that's just because that spot etf inflow that you just saw blackrock again a new autumn high in the inflows around 800 million dollar worth of bitcoin bought and it's just insane how much volume there is at the moment on the market if that insane volume keeps continuing then yes i believe the prices could go higher than the 120 to 150k that i predicted for a very long time ago but that's all depending on the volume and the big waves of course so if we keep seeing the buying pressure of 600 to 800 million dollars where the Bitcoin has been bought every day, yeah, then of course, then we could go higher than I ever expected, guys. So also beautiful to see on that one chart that we are now between the second and third bull market level in. So we are not going down below those three lines. We are even in between them, which also is telling me, hey, we could go a little bit higher than the previous bull market. So in my honest opinion, very interesting charts, but uh, always do your own research. Now let's quickly jump into the trading tip. It's very cloudy today, guys. It's very cloudy and we have uh, kind of big waves. So hopefully uh, the sound is still good. Maybe I can walk a little bit more upwards over here then we have a little bit less disruption of the waves. Uh, the trading tip for today, guys, is that it's always important to diversify your portfolio. Not only in crypto and everything in life. Just make sure you diversify. So diversify between Bitcoin and other altcoins or between Bitcoin and real estate or gold. Whatever you think is necessary always diversify. Yes, we went all in, but after going all in, 
we also started to diversify after the first bull market. And after the second bull market, even a little bit more diversifying. And I mean not only in assets. We also diversify in hardware storage. We have multiple hardware devices, multiple software devices. Aside of diversifying in assets and wallets, we also diversify in exchanges. Decentralized exchanges, centralized exchanges, different decentralized exchanges, different centralized exchanges. And then aside of that, even diversifying our portfolio into investments, pre-seed investment, IDOs, ICOs. So we diversify all our capital in multiple ways, but all of them are in crypto. And I think that is the biggest difference between us as the Bitcoin family and many other people. We are only invested fully, 100% in the cryptocurrency blockchain industry. We don't diversify into the traditional finance industry. We can't diversify there because we even don't have bank accounts. So we can't even make part anymore of the traditional finance industry. So for us, we trust cryptocurrency to the fullest. We are all in cryptocurrency, the biggest part in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is still our king, but we diversify our portfolio and everything else in cryptocurrency as well. And that all because we believe that staying in Bitcoin, deflationary asset, is better for our capital than taking profits and putting them back in Euro. So we don't treat Bitcoin like the way you are treating it. You are buying Bitcoin to sell it with profit and have more Euros on your bank account. We don't do that. We have Bitcoin and we multiply our Bitcoins and the top of the bull market by selling a little of the Bitcoin, buying them back at the bottom. We want more Bitcoin. And that is the training tip for the day. Always accumulate more Bitcoin while you diversify all your portfolios in between. The travel tip for today is try to collect as much as possible residencies. If you collect residencies, you can always choose where to pay your taxes on what kind of income that you have. So for example, you can have a Portuguese residency, you can have a Palau residency, you can have a Dutch residency, you can even have a Thai residency. You can have many residencies at the same time. You can't have many passports. As a Dutch passport holder, you're not allowed to have multiple passports, but residencies are allowed. And if you have a residency, for example, in Portugal, you obey to the Portuguese uh, tax system. And for us as a Bitcoin family, that is very important because in Portugal, we pay 0% tax on our Bitcoins if you hold them longer than one year. So most of our Bitcoins are way older than one year, so we don't need to pay tax on that. And if I need to use exchanges that I'm not allowed anymore as a Dutch citizen, I will use my Palau residence. Because of the Palau residence, all the profits made in cryptocurrency and all their income outside of Palau is also 0% tax. So then that crypto exchange will be registered on my Palau residence. I received many questions about that one, so that's why I created the course in the Bitcoin Family VIP section, but you need to become a Bitcoin VIP member to get full access to the course, to the Telegram group, to the VIP signals and everything else, guys. So make sure you go to the website, thebitcoinfamily.com to uh, find out how that works. So residencies, in my honest opinion, very important. Also, whenever there comes another lockdown, one of those crazy things that the government wants to yoke, you know to go outside, you can always choose to go home to one of your residencies that doesn't have a lockdown. So I would always go for Mexico, Thailand, and Palau, then you always have three countries that are mostly not so retarded when it comes to lockdowns and all that shit, guys. So make sure you can always go there, back home to that residency, and use it for cryptocurrency trading without paying too much tax. Now, that was the travel tip. The question from one of the followers was, Diddy, do you homeschool your kids or what do you do uh, during the travels? I have answered that question many times. I'm going to answer it again because there's also new people watching these videos. So I need to repeat some of these questions. Sometimes we do not homeschool our kids anymore. So my oldest one is 18, the second one is 16, and the third one is 14. Uh, we taught them all the basics so they can all read, write and calculate. And we think that's the most important thing of education. Because all that other stuff, you know, that they are putting in the brains of your children in the normal schools, we don't want our kids to memorize books about history, about wars, about all that stuff. Of course, our kids are also educated about history, but in an other way. So we go to countries, we tell them about history, we go and visit a museum, or we watch a documentary about that country together. So they will learn, but we don't want them to memorize it. We just want them to know what happened, and that's it. Why would we still be memorizing books from the past and all that shit that we never use in the future anymore? There is ChatGPT, artificial intelligence. We have so many evolving technology that all that memorizing 
is not a quality in it anymore. The technology has evolved already to that point that I predicted eight years ago. I thought eight years ago, why would I still have my kids memorize books if in the future artificial intelligence will take over? The skill of memorizing is not that important anymore in this age. We have ChatGPT and many other options that are way smarter and faster than our own brain. You need to prepare the kids for the future, not for the past. So we don't want them to be brain fucked, brain raped or brainwashed by those traditional schools that still think in a very traditional way and do not even consider the possibilities that we can use already now so let's stand aside the possibilities we will be able to use in the future. The combination of Bitcoin, blockchain, AI, Internet of Things is changing the world in a drastically fast way. Schools should prepare the kids for that. And that's why our kids are unschooled, not going to any school. We just prepare them for the future, not for the past. The news for today, guys, is about Instagram and Facebook going down on Super Tuesday. They both had issues on Super Tuesday, guys. I don't even know what it means, Super Tuesday, but Instagram and Facebook went down. I think you will all have noticed that now. Um, the important thing that is behind this news is that I believe that you all should find new decentralized ways of social media. Because even Instagram and Facebook, they are really collecting all your data and even selling your data to all kinds of companies that you don't want your data to be known by. So there is a lot of options in the blockchain industry nowadays that don't collect your data, where you own your own data. For example, you have X, like Twitter, but you also have Noster. For example, you have Instagram, but you also have Republic in the blockchain version. So there's many decentralized social media options that are up and running, doing a beautiful job, but they still don't have the volume that like an audience that Facebook and Instagram of course has. So they can only become bigger than Facebook and Instagram if people start to use them. And that's not exactly what isn't happening. I think it's very important that we all start to realize that there is alternatives to the current social media where you are in control of your data. It's very important for your children, it's very important for yourselves. But they also understand and feel the same like you. I, I don't want to go to a platform where there's not that many people yet because yeah, there's no possibility to share it with my friends and family because they are still on Facebook and Instagram. But in my honest opinion, the more and the more we will see Facebook, Meta, Instagram need to go into court because of all these privacy issues that the more people will understand that this isn't the way to do social media. Social media is meant to have social contacts with each other, not other companies to mine your data and sell it to other companies again, and that you will be bombed again with advertisements from those companies because you're using one of these social media platforms. So I want you to take a look at Nostor, for example, which is the decentralized version of X, uh, instead of Threads on Instagram again, or uh, look at, for example, Republic, which is the decentralized version of Instagram. So, and I know there is many others, so if you know any other decentralized social media platform, let me know down below all of them, video platforms, picture platforms, or text platforms, whatever you know, please put them down below in the comments so that other people also can learn and check them out for themselves. Now, that was the news for the day. The biggest companies when it comes to social media went down last Tuesday. The live quote for today, guys, has to do with the question of the follower today, uh, because the quote is, when education limits your imagination it's called indoctrination and that is exactly what is happening to the traditional schooling systems all our kids that go to traditional school systems need to do the same they need to memorize books they need to memorize history they are limited in their imagination and that is why the traditional schooling system in my honest opinion is indoctrination when your education is limiting your imagination, it's called indoctrination. And that is how I think about the traditional schools. And I do think that there is some traditional schools that try to do different, but even they have difficulties in giving kids a different curriculum because they are not allowed by law. For example, in the Netherlands, you have Rudolf Steiner Educare or Montessori. They are, again, they are different schools, but still, the kids that want to pass from that school, they need to do the same test that all the other children from the other schools need to do. So in the end, they still are a little bit indoctrinated, and we as a family just don't want it that. That's why we took the kids out of school. But there's everything in life. 
whenever there is something that is limiting your imagination, it is indoctrination, also in your job. For example, if you have a marketing job and they tell you what to do and you can't use your imagination, then that, in my opinion, also is a form of indoctrination because you're not free to choose what to market or how to market a certain product or service. So I think it's very important that you understand that quote. Whenever education is limiting your imagination, that is the moment we call it indoctrination. And that is sadly also happening to all the news guys, because all the mass media news that you're listening every day, that is not created anymore by news readers that have still the freedom to use their imagination to tell the real news as they experience it. No, they just need to read a couple of cards that are written by the big companies hanging above those media companies. They determine what the news is and they determine what kind of vibe is given to that news, guys. That is what we saw in the last couple of years, how all the news agencies exactly repeated each other about the fake flu and all that other stuff, guys. So whenever education is limiting your imagination, it is indoctrination. So don't fall for that. Don't look at all that news. Don't bring your kids to those kind of schools. So in our honest opinion, there's no use to bring our kids to those kind of schools that indoctrinate our children. We bring them to the school of life by having them live life to the fullest. And by living life to the fullest as a parent, you lead by example and you show your children the possibilities that there is in the world. And it's not only going to school and going to the next school and getting a job and paying as much as possible taxes to keep the country up and running. That is not the goal of life. Our goal of life is being happy, living in freedom and having a beautiful life. And that is what we are teaching our kids by unschooling them and by schooling them in the school of life. So whenever your education is limiting your imagination, we call it indoctrination. Let that be the beautiful quote to end this video. I hope you really enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, leave a comment, and let me know down below what you think about the charts and everything else. Yes, the video today was not like the perfect video. I'm still not completely recovered from, I don't know what kind of uh, cold I had. It was a strong cold, uh, but I will be back next week. This weekend, guys, I probably won't be doing AMAs, maybe one AMA on Sunday, an English one, uh, but this weekend is my last weekend on Phuket. So I want to enjoy this weekend to the fullest with all my Phuket family over here. Thanks for watching this video. I wish you an amazing Friday, an amazing uh, weekend. Hopefully we can see some positive volatility pushing the Bitcoin price above 70K this weekend. And yes, if that will happen, guys, I promise you to jump in the pool or in the sea with my clothes on and all that stuff. I will still do that. Promise is promise. I am a man of my worth, but I was a little bit too sick this week to uh, do it at that wick to the altar That was not an altar high. The altar high needs to be a full body clothes above the previous altar high body clothes. Now, have a beautiful Friday and see you probably Sunday again.